This is PsychBoost helping you with your psychology qualification one video at a time. This video is on psychological problems, and in this 21st GCSE video, we'll be covering mental health. The very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. A very big thank you for your help, guys, to join them. Follow this link. For everyone, you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. So here, as usual, are the terms on the AQA GCSE specification we're going to cover in this video. As we go through this video, they'll be in red text, and you need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. This unit is about psychological problems, two in particular, depression and addiction. But before we discuss psychological problems, we should have a good idea about what it means to be psychologically healthy. And we do find that people who are not suffering from mental health problems share a range of characteristics. If we use those to define mental health, we can then use them to define psychological problems. So positive engagement with society is one characteristic. This can be as simple as attending school and work and making a positive contribution while you're there, or even just attending social events. Effective coping with challenges. There are problems in everyone's life exams coming up, big projects at work, mentally healthy people are able to focus and work through those problems. They don't get overwhelmed by the problems and they don't ignore them. Not being overwhelmed by difficult feelings. Everybody experiences sadness at some points. It's a natural emotion. For mentally healthy people, we expect that the sadness will be temporary and the causes of the sadness will be kept in perspective. Positive relationships. Support networks are a collection of close friends and family that you turn to when you've got a problem. Mentally healthy people will work on keeping these positive relationships going. Dealing with disappointments. There are bad life events that happen to all of us. We expect mentally healthy people to react as positively as possible without excessive self-criticism. And when it comes to making decisions, mentally healthy people tend to not overthink or procrastinate about their choices. Now, when looking around the world, we tend to see a variation in beliefs about mental health problems. Western society has developed explanations for mental health that follow medical, biological explanations, tested scientifically. But some non-Western cultures give explanations based more on the mind and spirituality, with treatment based more on religious ideas. Now, this can lead to increased stigma towards people suffering from mental health conditions. People feeling shame for having a mental health problem are less likely to go and seek medical help. Symptoms are interpreted differently around the world. One example is hearing voices. Now this would be interpreted as auditory hallucinations in the UK and go towards a diagnosis of schizophrenia. However, for people from an Afro-Caribbean heritage, hearing voices can be an acceptable and even positive religious experience. This is thought to be part of the reason people from an Afro-Caribbean background living in the UK are much more likely to be diagnosed with schizophrenia than the general population. Mental health is linked to the environment you live in. And it's true for all of us, the modern world has changed how we live. It's thought that modern living has caused particular pressures due to changes in technology, the economy and politics. One big change is people are now much more socially isolated than the past. More people are living alone, especially older people who tend not to live with their children. Younger people are now living more independent, less family-focused lives. Many moving away from their social networks or work. Research is showing that people are now feeling that they have fewer close friends they can confide in. Social media is thought to be having a negative effect on the mental health of younger people. Social networks are thought to be linked to a sense of competition, body image disorders, and can enable online bullying. Factors leading to anxiety and depression. Changes to the economy has led to more temporary employments. Workers without job security can worry about how they'll survive financially. The data around prescriptions for antidepressant medication certainly seems to support a rise in depression in recent years. Between 2008 and 2018, prescriptions rose 97%. While modern living may have increased how many people suffer from mental health problems, it also seems to have raised awareness. Understanding the causes of mental health problems has in part been due to the work of charities as well as changes in the law like the Mental Health Act that protected people who suffer from mental illness. It also seems to be that the social stigma around having a mental health disorder has reduced. There's been high profile mental health campaigns to encourage people to talk more about the mental health, some targeted at individual groups like men who still show high levels of stigma compared to women. 
Research also suggests knowing someone with a mental health condition improves attitudes towards people with mental health conditions generally. As more and more people are disclosing mental health conditions and sharing their experiences, tolerance is increasing. A national survey shows this improvement over time in attitudes. People's willingness to work, live and continue a relationship with someone with a mental health problem increased by 11% between 2009 and 2016. We're going to finish this introduction to mental health by considering the effects mental health problems have not only on the individual, but society more generally. If we think about the effects on an individual, of course we mean the symptoms, but that mental health condition can impact other areas of their lives. So, for example, symptoms like low motivation and anxiety can cause a reduction in communication that a person has with the people around them. Eventually, close friends and family members become more socially distant. In extreme situations with severe symptoms, if patients can't provide a safe environment, children might be placed in a care setting. And that prolonged separation can then lead to distress for both parents and children and may result in permanent relationship breakdown. Symptoms can also make normal day-to-day -day tasks difficult for sufferers. This can lead to problems with hygiene or difficulties performing in school or work. There can also be a negative impact on the person's physical well-being. Symptoms or the side effect of medication can prevent the sufferer from eating healthily, might result in sleep loss and can lower the motivation to exercise. As well as those implications to the individual, mental health problems affect all of us in society. People with mental health conditions often need social care. If their problems stop them from being employed, they need support with their housing and other costs. People who suffer from severe mental health problems may need to be cared for in an institution. Increased crime rates can result from mental health conditions that impair a person's judgment. This can result in violence, especially people who are addicted to alcohol and drugs. And people who are struggling with an addiction might turn to petty crime like shoplifting to fund the habit. We can also consider negative effects on the economy. Days off sick cost companies money and lost productivity. Supporting millions with mental health problems is expensive for the NHS. And the cost of the police and criminal justice system of dealing with problems like addiction are significant. The funding for all of these implications comes from the tax system and is money not spent on other government priorities. Okay, we've covered the content. We now need to use all that information to actually answer questions. So here are five questions I've made up to test your skill. So pause the video and give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I put together an additional bonus video showing you how to answer these properly. For everybody else, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video on psychological problems, depression.